Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I want to talk to you about how to know the will of God. When a person becomes a Christian, the Bible says that old things pass away and behold, all things become new. That's because the Lord is working on changing you and transforming you into the character and the stature of his son, Jesus Christ. So uh, that's a, a path, a different path than going the way of the world. Whenever you go the way that God wants you to do, it's a more narrow way. It's a good way, but it's a more narrow way than just doing whatever you want to do in the world. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 says, Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. That's called the golden rule. It's the part where you say, do unto others the same way you'd have them do unto you, in other words. It would be like uh, considering how you want to be treated and then stopping and thinking how other people want to be treated and being respectful. That's what that's about. It says, For this is the law and the prophets. He said, Enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's talking about um, just, as again, doing whatever you want versus going the way after God and following Jesus Christ. Uh, it says, And many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Um, I want you to know that the Christian life is a good life. It is full of joy and activity and uh, friends who are very, very uh, good, faithful, reliable friends. Hard to find, by the way, in this world. And so... Having uh, Christian friends who are really walking with the Lord is wonderful. It is good. But it is not just a broad way. It's not just saying that everybody can do whatever they want to anybody and it'll all be fine. It doesn't work out that way. And the guide that the Holy Spirit uh, provides for us is amazing. He can stop you when you're going the wrong way. He can get you to turn right or left. He can get you to... Uh, even to desire to do the things that you ought to do uh, against what you would have done before you became a believer. He directs our steps toward new opportunities that he has for us, and he offers discernment, that's wisdom, so we can make good decisions, wise decisions, to keep us on track. When we just do whatever we want, or whatever our so-called friends encourage us to do, you got to be careful, because sometimes the choices that we make um, really leads you down a wrong path in your life. And it's tough because once you've made a bad choice, then you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're thinking, well, I didn't do so good on that. And you lose, you lose your confidence in yourself to do the right thing. Um, what we have to do is stop and ask for guidance. If you ask God for wisdom, He won't withhold it from you. God is always pleased whenever we ask him to give us wisdom because he desires to choose to lead us the right way. He wants to keep us in the center of his will. And I've discovered that sometimes many Christians wonder, how can I know the will of God in my life? Seeking God's direction involves a pattern that begins with looking at ourselves. The first place you got to do is look in the mirror. I don't mean just the physical mirror. I'm talking about looking at yourself in the, in the mirror of God's word and say, how am I really doing? Am I doing what I should be doing or not? Am I uh, not doing the things that I should be doing, perhaps? But in any case, examine your own life and say, am I really doing and living the way that I ought to? Okay. Uh, you can ask this, Father, I'm speaking to God, do you see anything in my life that might interfere with my understanding what you're saying? Every time we sin or do something disobedient to God, it shuts down God's guidance. Sin blocks the power of the Holy Spirit to work in your life, and it clouds our judgment. The Bible teaches that God will cleanse you of mistakes, sin that you've committed in your life, if you'll confess it to Him. 1 John 1.8, we'll close with this, says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. That's a promise and it's a warning. If we refuse to give up a rebellious habit or attitude, the Lord will not hear our prayers. 
But if we go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry, and, I'm, and I don't want to live that way anymore, please forgive me. The Lord will forgive you, and then you can say, Lord, lead me the right way, and he will help you to go the right way. You'll never be sorry when you're doing the right thing, okay? God bless you. Have a great day.